Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to day five of my accessory week. So this week, Monday through Friday, I've been looking at my top five favorite gaming accessories. Uh, the, uh, specifically for me for Dungeons & Dragons, but most of these can be found for just about any role-playing game out there. Uh, so far this week, I've looked at miniatures, dice, uh, pre-printed maps and dungeon tiles. Uh, Dungeon and Dragon magazine from, you know, that ended back in 2007, unfortunately. And today I'm going to look at my favorite accessory, I think, that I've ever, of all time, the ones that I enjoy the most, and that's going to be some Dungeon Master screens. So I've got actually quite a few DM screens, more than I ever thought uh, I would ever have. And when I first started playing Dungeons and Dragons, I didn't even know about DM screens. Like, I had never ever uh, seen it like none of the people that Ryan games that I played in or you know myself had anything that we used to like conceal our dice rolls we just kind of did everything out in the open so at least there was you know I guess that uh, it wasn't until I started reading the Knights the Dinner Table comics um, that I noticed that the the DM uh, BA was always sitting behind the screen and as it turns out like Dungeon Master screens are just a really big thing and you know of course this was all news to me but over the years, like I said, I've added quite a few to my collection. And I thought I'd start off just by showing them through the various editions that I have them for. So I do not I do not have a first edition <coughs> uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons DM screen. I would love to have one, but I just I don't own one of those and I haven't come across any of them in the wild. Uh, but I did, however, when I was looking through some of my old box sets, I did discover for second edition AD&D, <coughs> this screen that came in my Dragonlance uh, box set. I think it was Tales of the Lance is what this came in. So it's just got some nice artwork there. You got Lord Soth, and you just got some like Draconians, and I'm pretty sure that's Tasselhoff. And uh, what's kind of cool about it is it like, looks like it's got, you know, hands as if it's looking through like a uh, scrying glass, it kind of looks like. And just on the, uh, the fronts here as well. You just have like some weapon charts, which is pretty cool. Like all their uh, their damage against small, medium, and large. Their uh, their cost, their weight. Uh, the only thing I don't think it has is their oh yeah speed. Okay. Yeah. So you got that, and then on this side you just got some common equipment. So non-weapon equipment, household provisions, trade good. And so that's on the outside of the screen, so that's something that could be facing towards the players. On the inside of the screen, and I'll be doing this probably a fair bit for this video, but let's just, uh, well actually let's see if I can just do it this way for now. So on the inside of the screen you have um, sequences of play, so the order that actions take place in. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, observation ranges, hearing ranges. Animal Mahout's movement rates, terrain effects on combat moves, and over here we've got the order of events in combat, determining initiative, and all the different things you can do there, resolving an attack. Uh, monsters attacking uh, immune monsters. All right, armor class ratings. So you know what the AC is, and of course, back in those days, the lower the better. Here's your Thaco charts for um, your uh, your player character class types, and I think the yeah, your monster hit dice as well. Number of attacks per round. Additional missile combat modifiers, uh, non-lethal damage, punching and wrestling charts. Whoop! <clears throat> and just over here, we're just gonna throw a little quicker here. We got armor class, uh, grenade like missile, uh, grenade missile, grenade like missile effects. Uh, substituting armor material, missile weapon ranges. And a scatter diagram. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Adventure XP rewards. 
So as you can see here, um, this was not all about just killing monsters. There's other ways like surviving, clue recovery, conning foes, individual player rewards, cooperates with DM, used to give you experience points. Uh, individual class XP, so there you go. Defeated foe XP, so just a lot of experience point stuff here. Uh, spell use synopsis, character silly saving throw charts, and the turning undead. So that is my second edition, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons screen. So I'm pretty happy to have that. So if I run a second edition AD&D game. I now have a uh, screen for it. But moving on, so I first discovered uh, DM screens when I was running 3rd edition. And uh, I picked up, uh, I only picked up one screen for 3rd uh, edition D&D or 3.0, <coughs> but that was the Forgotten Realms Dungeon Master screen. So what's cool about this is you got the, uh, the screen in there, but it also comes with uh, some encounter charts. So this is just a little paper sleeve that we're pretty accustomed to, especially these days. So the first thing, uh, we just have our encounters in Fae Room, and it is literally just a bunch of uh, encounter charts. So if you just wanted to do random encounters, there's a little bit of information that goes along with it. Uh, these charts were really fantastic, and they go, I think, all the way up to, to 20th level. And they even have some creature stats, uh, just very basic creature stat blocks in the back as well, which is pretty cool. So that came with the uh, with the screen itself. And the as for the, the screen, the way that it looks. Alright, see if we can get it folded out here. Alright. <laughs> so we got uh Gretz uh Gretz, we got Dred Stewart in with uh, Guinevar. And then we just have this battle here with a uh, Beholder, which is pretty cool looking. Um, it's kind of a weird representation of the Beholder, but it's still, you know, pretty cool looking. And it looks like some uh, Orcs or Tanarooks uh, attacking a party there. And then this guy here, I'm not entirely sure who this is supposed to be. I want to say that that's supposed to be uh, Artemis and Trary, but I'm not entirely sure. As for what we have here on this one... Uh, so this one also has a weapon chart, which is really great. So it has just the uh, all like martial, exotic, simple weapons. <laughs> Excuse me. Then you got your fundamental actions in combat. Now this is back when they had uh, partial actions. And um, also the only unfortunate thing about this version of the game is things like attack of opportunity. Maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, Maybe, 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 maybe so. The chart wasn't the most useful thing if there were, you know, um, uh, reasons why you may or may not get a tax of opportunity. I think for the most part, they do try to have some of them explained on the uh, on the chart here as well. But it just wasn't the wasn't the best set of, set of charts back in the day. They got attack roll modifiers, uh, cover, concealment, and you got your miscellaneous actions. So you got your free actions, you got your move equivalent actions, uh, and then of course again you've got your attack of opportunity, yes, no, maybe, and varies. Uh, we also have our armor charts here, so all the different types of armor, and the years. So this goes all the way up to... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. So it goes past the, the current year where this campaign started. So 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons Forgotten Realms started in 1372. And it actually has the uh, list of names for all the years going all the way up to uh, 18 or 1380, uh, which is pretty cool. Then you've got size and AC of objects, uh, hardness and hit points of objects, uh, common weapon shield hardness and hit points, DC to break or burst items, uh, again some ob object, hardness and hit points, uh, terrain and overland movement, turning undead, the calendar of, of Harptos, so the actual like uh, roll of the, the months, and the special holidays as well, and light sources. So that is the third edition Forgotten Realms uh, screen, so 
This was the uh, the first screen that I ever actually uh, owned. And oh. I don't know why it's being a little difficult to fold back up here. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, there we go. Well, I'll just tuck that. It's been a long time since I've actually had this open. Alright, moving on. Uh, I'm going to show off a couple of them here because I think the information is more or less the same on both. Uh, but with this error, these are the DM screens that I have for Dungeons Dragons 3.5. <coughs> so this is the Deluxe Dungeon Master screen. <coughs> now this one, oh, excuse me. This was the first of the screens to have what they call the landscape <coughs> uh, style to them, which is what we know today. So the other screens used to be quite tall. Uh, these ones are meant to be sort of like wider, but easier to see over top of. So if you're using miniatures, or you want to observe the die rolls of your players, then these ones made that a lot easier. And that was one thing I did notice with my uh, Forgotten Realms one, was that it was really difficult to see over top of it um, when we were at a table. So this is the first one of those. Now this did also come with a D20 Modern uh, Dungeon Master screen. Uh, I gave that to a friend of mine because he was looking to run uh, stuff using D20 Modern and Gamma World. <coughs> and I didn't have anything for D20 Modern. I was never going to get anything for D20 Modern. So I no longer have that screen, but I still at least have the, uh, the sleeve that it came with. I actually just recently found this just a few months ago. I thought I had lost this forever, and I was kind of saddened by that actually because I wanted to have at least the uh, the things that went over the screens, uh, so I was glad that I actually was able to find this. So that's just that. And on the uh, the art here, we just have for some of our iconic characters. So we got uh, we got Regdar with a shield, which is unusual because he usually uses a great sword. And then we've got uh, Miley and uh, Krusk, and I don't know who he is. I don't think that's Gimbal the Bard, but anyway, uh, so you got those characters, and they are facing off against a red dragon. And that's actually a really cool looking red dragon. And the dragon, of course, has some kobold guardians uh, guarding its uh, treasure hoard. So that's pretty cool. And I'm just going to flip that up like this, because what I'm going to do is just pick the camera up in a second and do the overhead view. But we also have the Eberron Dungeon Master screen that came out for 3.5 and like I said a lot of the information on the inside is pretty much the exact same although I think it adds like the uh, <coughs> I want to say it has the dragon marked <coughs> uh, information like the dragon marked houses on it I want to say um, but the main reason to get this is that it included the map of uh, Corvair which was not included in the hardcover uh, campaign setting. The only way to have gotten a map previous was there was one included with a dragon magazine, uh, which is very sort of like more of a much more basic looking map. But uh, this this was the way to get the Eberron map if you wanted a map of uh, of Corvair uh, during the days of 3.5. So I'm not going to completely unfold the map, but you just kind of see it here, and it is a very nice map. The Shadow Marches. The only thing is, again, that it's it's only, I guess I'll unfold it, it's only Corvair and it's single sided. So it doesn't have, like, in relation where Zendrick is or Sarlona or Arganassim. Um, but still, you know, this was a major, uh, a major, major bonus to get um, with, the, uh, with the Dungeon Master screen. <clears throat> so, like I said, again, if you wanted to get the map for Eberron, that was the only way to get it. But on the front here, we just have some characters taking on some Emerald Claw agents. And we got a, uh, looks like a vampire there that they are also up against. So again, it's pretty cool, pretty cool art. I like it. But what I want to do now is like I'm just going to pick up <coughs> this here. And um, yeah, there are some some differences, but not much actually. Uh, so let's just pick this up. <clears throat> now, the one thing that's a little bit disappointing about the Eberron screen is that it is black and white. 
on the inside so like no color like you look there you see the uh, the scatter diagram up there is nicely colored the charts are nicely colored as well uh, so what you have uh, for both of these is you just have the common uh, armor weapon shield hardness and hit points so you got substance hardness and hit points DCs to break and burst items items affected by magical attack I always hated that chart and I never used it because I didn't want to destroy everybody's uh, items. And that's the same there. And then you got the uh, size and armor class of objects, object hardness and hit points. You got walls, uh, doors. And up here, like I said, these are both the same, I think, for the entirety of the panel as well. <coughs> so we'll look at the colored one. So this has turning undead, uh, increasing weapon damage by size, determining weapon damage by, s or decreasing weapon damage by size. Attack roll modifiers, armor class modifiers, and down here we just have influencing NPC attitudes, uh, climb check DCs, listen check DCs, and again our uh, missile uh, or missing with the thrown weapon diagram. And again, that's the same there. The only difference is you got the D&D logo, and there you have the Eberron logo. Uh, so over here, <coughs> we have, I think, our first and only difference <coughs> of all the screens. So we got our actions, and there you can see, once again, we got our attack of opportunity chart with the words maybe or varies in there. So these are the actions that you can take. Same down here. It's nice that it does give the page reference for the player's handbook as well. And then actions continued. You got concentration check DCs. <laughs> which you got on both screens, and you got our list of skills. And this screen has the ability modifiers. Um, so that's on this one. This screen has the skills, but down here we have the months of the year for Eberron as well as the days of the week. And that's actually it. That's the only Eberron specific information is that little bit right there. So not even the names of the Five Nations, uh, not even the name of the dragon marked houses and the leaders, nothing. Just that's that's your Eberron content right there. And then of course the ex next screen is the exact same I think for everything. So you got uh, movement and distance, maximum distance for spot checks, light sources uh, and illumination, <coughs> hampered movement, uh, armored slash encumbered speeds. You got information for detect magic, detect evil, and that's it. So I think I already said light source and illumination. And this screen here is the exact same. So yeah, those were your 3.5 Dungeon Master screens. And uh, so yeah, the Eberron one, um, <clears throat> I recall not using it a lot. Uh, and I think I bought it mainly to get the, uh, the official map, because it was a very nice looking map. Um, But I just remember like being a little disappointed that there was very, very, very little uh, Eberron content on the supposed Eberron screen and that really, you know, the calendar's okay, but I'd much rather have like, again, information on the dragon marked houses, such as what the dragon mark's name is, what the, uh, the races that can bear the mark consist of, uh, things of that nature. <laughs> All right, so moving on, uh, we are now into 4th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I didn't get any of the original 4th uh, edition Dungeon Master screens. I think there was only one for the hardcover books. Uh, I, did, I didn't start really collecting 4th uh, edition until D&D Essentials was released. <coughs> so the first damn screen I actually had for 4th edition was this one here. So this is a thinner cardstock one. But this came with the Dungeon Masters kit, and I actually really, really love the screen. And the artwork and everything on it is fantastic. Uh, I think, I honestly think it's the same artwork that was on the deluxe version, which was just the thicker cardstock uh, from when 4th edition first came out. But there's just an amazing collection of monsters there. So we got Gargoyle, uh, Vampire, Beholder. Mind Flare, Umber Hulk, you got some bugbears in the background there. Uh, the fourth edition reimaginings of the Troglodytes, 
and of course the black dragon. So it was awesome that I had a black dragon. Some drow and a drider. And uh, I will say, I actually like the way that driders were handled in 4th edition a lot better. I know a lot of people may say it's like sacrilege to change the way that driders are revered. Uh, but honestly, to me, like, Walth takes on the form of a drider all the time. So it never made sense to me that the punishment for individuals failing the test of Walth was to become a drider which has the lower body of a spider which is closer to the image of Loth, so it just never made sense to me. So I like that Driders were actually in a position of power in 4th edition, because to me, if you're going to have the lower body of a spider, and your whole um, race reveres spiders, and your goddess takes on the form of, uh, a lot of times, of a, uh, a Drider-like creature with the lower body of a spider and the upper body of a you know, drown woman, to me, that just made sense, so I like the way that they handle Driders. Anyway, a little mini rant off, uh, over, I mean. And then you got a Fire Giant and a Roper. Now, the inside charts, I think, is going to be the same for both, so I'm just going to lay that out for now. Uh, but they did eventually release their deluxe uh, Dungeon Master screen for 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons. This worked for Essentials as well as the, uh, the hardcover stuff. It does say it's, you know, for the Rules Compendium, Dungeon Master's Kit, and Monster Vault, but again, uh, the great thing about D&D Essentials is that it didn't uh, negate or completely erase the hardcover, so you could still use the hardcovers along with all the other stuff. Uh, but what we've got here, so this one's a little bit more cartoonish looking, a little more sort of anime inspired, which is still fine, it's still nice looking art. you got a disp uh, Displacer Beast and an Ogre, you've got some Harpies there, and then you got just some characters, so you got like a drow, hunter, uh, dwarf, I want to say it's probably a cleric, uh, tiefling, sorcerer, warlock, uh, human fighter, and probably halfling rogue. You got some gnolls up there, and a red dragon. So that's what's on the outside of the screen that's facing towards the players. And on the inside, uh, like I said, the insides are the exact same for both. So, uh, let's just... Have a look here, this one lays a little flatter, so although this one may get a little bit less glare. So what we have is the experience point uh, rewards, attack roll modifiers, uh, base exploration speed, travel and distance, uh, damage by level. So you can use that to sort of improvise some things. <coughs> you got food, drink, and lodging, light sources, uh, monster knowledge DCs, Knowledge uh, skills by origin, DCs to break or burst common items, uh, standard actions, move actions. Uh, I think we're gonna pick up a little bit of the glare there, so well, I think we're gonna get it no matter what. Uh, so we got move actions, minor actions. Which that overhead lights just being really annoying. All right, uh, immediate actions, uh, opportunity actions free actions, uh, skill challenge complexity. Uh, oh, actually there is uh, some differences here. Okay. Ah uh, yes, we got skill challenge complexity and charging. So up here, uh, I never actually noticed this, so up here we have instead of the skill challenge by complexity and charging, <coughs> we have um, we got free actions, and then we just have here, uh, we've got like partial cover, uh, superior cover, uh, area attacks in close attacks, creatures in cover, uh, reach, and determining cover as well as concealment. So there's cover and concealment here, uh, which is not on the larger, the thicker screen. So okay, I've actually never really paid attention to that, so there we go, I, I discovered a difference. We got our difficulty class by level, that's the same on uh, both charts, or both screens. Uh, DCs for commonly used skills, oh. uh, Arcana, Athletics, Bluff, Engineering, so these are just the DCs for the various uh, skills that you would use a, a lot. And we just got them all down here, so you got like Heal, Insight, uh, Perception, Streetwise, Thievery. And then we got our conditions, so I'm not going to read them all out, but these are just like things like being blinded or uh, petrified, stunned, surprised, unconscious, uh, healing a dying character, and death and dying. So that's the same on 
both of those as well. <laughs> so yeah, actually, I'm, I'm surprised that I never really picked up on the differences before. I never really had them laid out side by side before. So, um, yeah, I just thought, I just assumed that they had all the same information because everything looked the same, but I guess I didn't realize that one had uh, skill challenges and the other was about uh, cover and concealment. So, just fold these up. Alright, so now we are into our D&D 5th edition screens. So I've showed off these uh, in their own separate videos already. Uh, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but if you want to kind of see them again, so we've got uh, our Dungeon Master screens. So this is the first one, and then we have the Dungeon Master screen reincarnated. Uh, so these came out for 5th uh, edition. I've also got three of the campaign-based um, DM screens as well. Um, so why don't I show these first, just because... Um, they're sort of your standard generic screens anyway. So just on the outside here, we just have our iconic uh, heroes, which actually have the, uh, the miniatures that correspond to them in the Icons of the Realm starter set that came out way, way back when 5th edition first launched. Uh, which is cool. They did revamp and change a few things around. Uh, they did a second starter set and they, like, they changed the skin tone <laughs> of the archer and the color choices, I think, of the barbarian and stuff like that. But you got some kobolds, you got our iconic characters facing off against a really cool looking red dragon with his nasty scar. It looks like he's blind in one eye. And his kobold guardians. And we'll just flip this over. And we'll look at the, the charts in a moment, but we also have our Dungeon Master screen reincarnated. So this is the newer one, and um, I'm still not as sold on this one. I still think I like the original one actually a little bit better. Um, just because, you know, again, I, I actually liked the NPC information. Like the trying to just create them sort of on the fly because, you know, I had people say, well, you know, a good Dungeon Master should always have their NPCs fleshed out, but it's like... You know, the player characters are likely, you know, nine times out of ten going to, to, like, try to talk to someone that you didn't expect. Like, they just may talk to a random villager or something like that. And, you know, you want to have something for them. So, anyway. Oops, I guess I should have shown the, uh, uh, what was on the cover. It's not really anything too spectacular, so I'll just show this off because this has the entirety of the artwork on it. So it's just basically the red dragon flying away with some poor sod grasp in his, uh, in his claw. So on the screens, so like I said, this first one has all the NPC stuff, so like their characteristic ideals, bonds, and flaws, as well as a random name generator, which was always kind of interesting. They came up with some really bizarre, wonky names, uh, but I did use a few just because, you know, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Uh, whereas this screen has your actions in combat, And things like long jump, high jump, uh, suffocating, concentration, and uh, this one has uh, things you can do on your turn. Uh, these next two panels are the exact same, although the artwork is slightly different. Uh, I shouldn't say that the exact same, but this section here is the exact same. So these are just your conditions, so like blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, uh, grappled, incapacitated. And they even have like the same artwork. This is straight out of the player's handbook as well. Uh, invisible, paralyzed, petrified, and poisoned, which we have down here as well. Then we got prone, restrained, stunned, unconscious, and your levels of exhaustion, which are again also all here. So over here we have uh, setting a DC, which is the same on both. So we got setting a DC, setting a DC. Uh, we got skills and associated abilities. We got there and there. Uh, then we've got uh, cover, uh, which shows up later on this one. So this one has cover, obscured areas, light, like light sources. So this one has uh, tracking DCs, uh, damage by severity and level, object hit points, object armor class. And over here we have travel pace, encounter distance. Uh, there's this, this is where this screen has damage by level and severity. <coughs> And then the something happens screen or chart, which is kind of cool, as well as the quick find uh, chart, which again was actually kind of cool. I actually like both those things as well. 
All right, sorry about that, uh, camera cut out. So yeah, so we got the something happens and the quick finds charts, which I always actually really liked. And then we got on this one here, we just have travel pace, services, obscured areas, encounter distance, uh, cover, light sources, and then we got food, drink, and lodging, and just some size comparison things as well. This one has the Trosk ravaging a city. Um, and actually the artwork with the dice is also reproduced on both screens, although it's kind of clumped together, whereas there it is off to the side. All right. Or not off to the side, but uh, spread apart. Okay, so those were the uh, basic 5th edition D&D screens. And the interesting thing that I found was at the most recent uh, Penny Arcade Expo, um, Chris Perkins, when he was running Acquisitions Incorporated, was back to using the uh, this DM screen. So he wasn't using the DM screen reincarnated anymore. And I always thought that was kind of interesting, especially since I always really liked... Um, for me, I like this screen more than the reincarnated one. So for me, it was kind of nice to see that the old screen wasn't just completely, completely disregarded and that uh, somebody was still, you know, using it. So to see that uh, older DM screen there was pretty cool to me. Now, up next I have my three uh, adventure-based or module-based, whatever you want to call it, campaign-based uh, Dungeon Master screen. So I've got uh, Elemental Evil, and then we got Curse of Strahd, and the Tomb of Annihilation. Now I think, yeah, so I, I just had the map for the hardcover Tomb of Annihilation adventure. I just had that tucked inside of the screen, which I also did with Curse of Strahd, although I did have that one uh, taken out because I was using the screen as sort of a backdrop earlier. So um, what I'm going to do is just show off the individual screens, the outsides, and I'll just lay them flat out so you can kind of see what's on the inside for all of them. So this one here just has the leaders of, if I can get it out here, just has the leaders of each of the individual elemental cults uh, in the Prince of the Apocalypse storyline. I don't remember their names, uh, just because it's been a while since I read the book, but this is the leader of the Air uh, cult, and then this is the leader of the Earth cult, uh, Fire cult, which I think was, uh, was that Vanifer? I can't remember. And then you got the, uh, the Water cult, uh, which I think was called the Crushing Wave or something like that. So, uh, whoops, and we'll just flip that over so you can kind of see what's on the inside. Then we've got our Curse of Strahd. Which has, you got, so it looks like you got uh, Madame Eva there with her tarot cards. Uh, you got Strahd looking in his vampire form. You got a raven there, some characters confronting some wolves. Uh, you got the image of Strahd from the cover of the book, of course the logo down there. And then you have the more human-looking Strahd, uh, again with Madame Eva throwing some of her tarot cards there. So, we'll just set that down there like so. And then finally, we've got our Tomb of Annihilation, which has uh, just some characters struggling against some skeletons on a treasure pile. Got Ross Nisi, the Green Devil Face, uh, a gargoyle, although I don't think it's a four-armed gargoyle, and Port Neon, uh, Port Neon Zeru. Yeah, I think that's the the name. I came completely kind of brain farted there. So that's what's on that now. As far as the contents of the individual screens themselves, let's just have a look here. Alright, so our Elemental Evil has all of the princes of Elemental Evil. So you got uh, Yan Si Bin, Ogre Mach, Ola Hydra, and Imix. You have the conditions that were on the other DM screens. So you got them reproduced here again. Then you have the Desarin Valley map, which is pretty cool, with all the locations marked on there. And then you just have some encounters. Uh, so early travels, river travels, or later travels, which I'm assuming is probably a higher level. And just some artwork there. So you got the four different Genasi types. So you got earth, water, fire, and air. And just an image of a manticore. 
On our Curse of Strahd screen, we have Castle Ravenloft, so we got random encounters. Then we got the maps of the different levels. Because the you know Ravenloft classic module had sort of that isometric view. So you have all that, which is again really, really useful. Um, although the uh, Curse of Strahd adventure did come with the foldout with the uh, map booklet, which had uh, Castle Ravenloft stuff on there as well, but again, this is right on the screen. Then you got just some information on Barovia and random encounters, as well as Barovian names and just a big map of Barovia. So, which is again really cool. And then down here on our uh, Tomb of Annihilation, and again, I do apologize for the glare. It is difficult when you are uh, got a light directly over top of the table. Uh, we got our encounter table, so we got Amu encounters, and then Wilderness encounters, and then Port Nyanzaru encounters. Down here, we've got some artwork there. I forget the name of that creature off the top of my head, I do apologize. Then we got our Goblin Battle, for, uh, battle Stack, which is pretty cool. Just some images of treasure there. Uh, treasure tables. So we got caches so that you can come across, or treasure drops for some of the encounters. You can kind of roll and see what you get. Uh, traveling and Schult. So you got uh, travel paces, tracking through the hexes. You've got navigation, uh, dehydration, weather, extreme heat, and tropical storm. So what was actually really interesting about this screen is I had before I got the screen I had typed out all of this information that I gave myself just to have when I was running the Adventure for Adventurers League and honestly this to me is sort of the weakest of all the screens because you know the encounter charts are okay but there's no map where the other ones had you know maps of at least the environment and uh, yeah I don't know I just um, these screens are sort of hit or miss for me I think the Ravenloft one is probably overall my favorite uh, Curse of Strahd I should say is overall my favorite and I think is overall the most useful of the DM screens. The Elemental Evil one was a bit of a disappointment with the um, conditions being there because you know we have them on so many other uh, Dungeon Master screens and uh, the fact that um, you know the Tomb of Annihilation one doesn't have like a map of Cholt or even like a map of the Lost City of Amu on there, which would have been great. It just has um, three quarters of it is just the random tables for encounters. Um, so there you go. I mean, like I said, these are kind of hit or miss. Uh, I do want to collect all of the DM screens for the adventures. Uh, I'm missing uh, the Tyranny of Dragons one. I think there was just one that came out. I don't think they did one for Rise of Tiamat. I think it was just uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen. And uh, I'm missing the Out of the Abyss and Storm King's Thunder. So I'd like to get those at some point and do reviews on those. But those are my DM screens. So those are all the DM screens that I have in my collection. So in the comments below, let me know what you guys think of Dungeon Master screens or Game Master screens. Uh, do you use them in your games? And if so, what are some of your favorite screens that you've had? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. And I hope you guys have been enjoying this accessory week. It's, again, something that I just really wanted to do and just kind of talk about what are some of my favorite accessories overall uh, to use in role-playing games. Uh, for me, specifically, it's Dungeons & Dragons. But anyway, uh, so yeah, thank you again, guys, very much for watching. Uh, I appreciate all of your support. And again, let me know in the comments below what you think of DM screens and what are some of your favorites. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.